So I've got a couple of rings here as part of a client project and uh, we're going to sprue them up and I'm going to kind of explain how the spruing works and some of the methodology, some of the, the uh, decision making as to why you do it a certain way versus another way. This is a tree that I've built up uh, from some hand carved waxes. This is also some 3D prints and uh, you see how everything's at an upward angle. Um, you have to think of this upside down. So when the flask goes over top, the, the metal is being poured in from the bottom. So it's like this. And you have to think about how the fluid metal is going to, to drop into all these spaces. So most importantly, have it at an upward angle. You don't want to have any sharp corners or anything like that for that metal to hit and then start to freeze in place. You can see up here on, on this wax how I've connected this uh, broken section with, uh, with this little bridge. And uh, something I've found through personal experience is that when the metal goes in, if you've got a, an end bit that, um, that isn't connected and it's, it's very small, it, it tends to not fill properly depending on its location in the flask. Um, I noticed that further down the flask, uh, where the metal is first hitting when it's at its hottest, it tends to work. Further up the flask, remember we're thinking of this upside down, is when the metal is at its coolest, and uh, that's where I tend to put my, my heavier things, because the metal is still fluid, but we're talking like a difference of 100 degrees or 50 degrees, and that does start to add up very quickly. Um, a flask will cool off at a rate of about 100 degrees per minute. Uh, metal, even faster. If you just take it out and pour it, it will pretty much instantaneously become solid. So anyway, um, when I go to sprue these, these rings, you see how I've got texture all the way around it. Um, what I'm going to do to avoid ruining the texture that I've spent so much hard work and effort on is I'm going to sprue it from the inside. So. I'm going to have a single sprue come in and then it's going to split off into a V or maybe even three sprues, I'm not really sure at this point. And um, that's going to go to the inside of the ring. So I can just take a, a half round file, I can file that back when it's all cast in metal and give it a nice polish. Alright, so I'm using two kinds of sprue rod. Uh, these are both wax. Uh, I've got this one, I believe this is four millimeter and this one's two millimeter. And uh, the big, the thicker one I use as the, the kind of the base. So this is what attaches to the, uh, the central column. And then the little thin ones is kind of what I use for bridging and for you know, actually the, the metal flowing through. But I use multiple of these, so it does add up. And I can al it allows me to um, put the metal specifically where I need it. So for example, if this one had a stone setting, and I'd had all the little finicky prongs in the top or something, I would put one of these directly behind it and that ensures that the metal is going to go straight there and, uh, and get a good fill. So uh, with this, what I'm going to do is uh, just approximate how much wax I need. I'm going to do, a, I think I'm going to do three. I'll do three prongs. Um, so I'm going to bend this into a, a shallow V. I'm going to trim off some of the excess here and fit that. Just pressure fit in there like this. And then I'm going to use my uh, my wax pen over here out of shot and uh, I'm going to pick up a little bit of wax from this cutoff. Starting something is always the hardest. I'm going to put a little drop in there. I'm going to hold on to it. Sorry. I'm going to hold on to it until it cools off. And this wax cools off very, very quickly. I'm going to pick up a little bit more. Come in from the back. And drop in some more. One of the nice things about fluid wax is that it naturally forms a funnel. And I'll show you that in a second. Uh, 
So as I leave a drop, the drop tends to spread out and that acts, it, it allows the metal to flow a little bit more rather than get stopped at a, a solid junction. And I'm going to make sure that I come in from all sides because if I just do the back, then I've left a gap and that gap will get filled by the investment and it could act as like a little dam and I don't want to do that. Okay. Something else that I'm very aware of when I'm sprueing is uh, I want to make sure that uh, if I touch the central sprue that I haven't left a little thin area. Sometimes it will thin out like the wax will melt and it'll kind of move away from a certain spot and that'll create like a little, little narrow section. And uh, in some circumstances it's actually nice to have that because it can start to limit the flow of the metal. But uh, in this case, I want it to just flow nice and easy, so. All right, so we've done all sides. So now that I've got my little V here, uh, I'm gonna attach some of this sprue rod. And uh, when I, what I'm gonna do is make sure that I'm heating up the top of what I'm going to be attaching and the base that it's going to. So I'm gonna put my little wax pen right in the middle Try to heat up both evenly. Put the rod in, and I'm just gonna hold it there until it cools off. And there we go. So I can clean this up. This gives me a nice little holding stick. I can clean this up a little bit, bearing in mind that if I overheat it, it will just fall off. And then I can trim off the excess and uh, attach it to my tree. Remembering from what I said before that you want to avoid sharp corners. So this part where it, uh, it joined, I'm going to take a little bit of wax and just put a drop there and that gives it a nice gentle curve for that wax or for the metal to just flow into. And just cleaning up some of the little bits there. That's good. All right. So this one's done. I'm going to let it cool off just for a minute while I, since I have the other one to work on right here. And uh, we're going to do the same thing with this one. All right. So now that we've got both of them sprued up, I've got the one on both ends. Uh, I'm just going to take my utility knife here and trim off what I don't need. And uh, I'm cutting about a little bit like less than a quarter inch from the top. You want to have like a small stem in that the stem can then go into the base, um, but it really doesn't matter too much about the travel, the travel distance. It, uh, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, pretty much just as needed for, for sprue length. All right, so there's both. And uh, you see, this is a pretty awkward looking uh, tree here. So I'm gonna do my best to find a spot for it. All right, so I found a little spot right over here. So what I'm gonna do on this tree now is I'm gonna use, stick my pen into the, uh, col the central column and I'm just gonna hollow out a little hole, a little molten hole about the same size as the sprue rod. And uh, that, then I'm gonna stick it in and go around the outside. So here we go. little hole, stick that in, hold that just for a second, and it's stuck. And now being very careful not to touch any of the other models because as soon as the wax pen touches them, it will leave a mark that is pretty much impossible to remove. I'm now gonna go around the outside of what I just did. Uh, if you can't get to every single one, it's not the end of the world but you should try and cover up all the little gaps because sometimes there's like a little squish thing that comes out and uh, that'll, uh, it could become a, a, a little metal trap. So it's best just to keep everything nice and smooth. And here's the other ring. I'm gonna put that one right up here. Um, yeah, right at the top. So once again, I'm making a little hole approximately the size of my sprue, sticking the sprue in there, 
making sure that there's uh, enough of a gap between my other models. And then I'm going to go in around what I just did. And sometimes you have to go through another model, like a, another ring, and just touch up the edges of what I just did. And there we go. So there's two more things added to the tree. This will be cast in sterling silver probably in a couple of days. And uh, yeah, we'll see how this goes. Um, one last thing that I want to touch on before I uh, close out the video is um, the gap between each model. Um, it is very important that you don't touch uh, another model because then they'll be cast as one piece. Um, you know, if you have a very small, if it just touches a little bit, then you can usually break it off with no problem. Uh, but more, most importantly of all is you have to make sure that the plaster, which surrounds all of this, actually has some structure. So you can't, um, you can't build your tree in such a way that it's all balanced, you know, on a, on a little, a little bit that the inside will just collapse. And that's most important when you're making a hollow form. So if you say you want to make a ring and uh, say it's going to be like this big chunky looking thing, but it's actually hollow, you can cast a hollow form, but you have to make sure you have support pins throughout so that it actually holds it. Uh, the internal plaster. Yeah, that's something to bear in mind. Uh, but you know, you can get pretty funky with these trees. Uh, it, there's no particular uh, arrangement that I've found that's been completely detrimental except the angle. The angle is very important that you keep everything up and within the, the walls of this inside part here. You can have a little bit of a, you can have about a quarter inch gap away from the actual uh, wall of the flask and uh, that should be okay. Um, another little trick that I'll show you, let me just get my flask, is say for example I take this steel flask and I put it over everything and uh, oh my goodness, the, the top of my wax is poking out the top of the steel. I, I know it isn't, but just hypothetically. If, uh, if I put this base down, let me just seat this properly, because this is kind of vital. So if I seat this all the way down and there's a little piece sticking out the top, uh, it's not the end of the world. Uh, say you just need like, uh, you know, just need like another, another quarter inch is all you really need. You might think that it's wise to, when this is all covered up, it's got like a tube thing coming up the top, to overfill the top by just say you need a quarter inch more. Um, do not do that. Do, it, it, does, it always, almost always fails. Uh, it really depends on the design, but in my opinion, it's not the right right way to go. What I'll do instead is I will lower the base. So this, these rubber bases, they grip the, the steel pretty well. What I'm going to do is just go around and evenly approximate about a quarter inch. And what that's going to do is when I pull the flask, when I pull the rubber off, the, the plaster is going to be sticking out the bottom. The, so the bottom of the flask by about what you need. And um, because there's no waxes in this area, because there's no waxes in this area, there's, there's no chance that the plaster is going to break off. It, and it, even if it does, it's just going to be the top bit and it'll, it's just going to be a little chip. If you put it in the top of the flask and you overfill and you've got like a little hole or something like this, what can happen is um, because it's so thin and it's because it's unsupported, uh, most likely what will happen is you'll get a little tiny hole. As soon as you put it in the vacuum casting machine, you're going to hear a whistle. Your pressure will pretty much stay constant. And when you go to pour your metal in the top, all of the metal is just going to go straight out that hole into the bottom of your, uh, into, the, in the, into the vacuum basin and it'll freeze there and you've ruined your entire cast. So let's avoid that if at all possible. Something to, uh, to bear in mind if you start to do this yourself. Uh, I hope I've addressed a few of the uh, little intricacies, little tips and tricks that, uh, that can help you get more successful casts if you have started this yourself. And uh, if you haven't, well, then you're armed with knowledge and you should be 
well on your way to casting your own work. Well, thank you for watching, and uh, see you later on in the series.